Hi and good morning. My name is Atar Bintu Zulkifli and I'm from U6. My name is Tan Xing and I'm from U6. Assalamualaikum and hello. My name is Noor Aisha Akila from U6. As English teachers, we found that pupils have problems in expressing or describing features of living things and objects around them. Thus, pupils need new accurate adjectives to avoid on using the same adjectives like beautiful and big. By teaching adjectives using visual and auditory media in Google Classroom, pupils can gain new vocabularies regarding adjectives for them to use in their daily lives. So, we have chosen Google Classroom as our online teaching platform. Google Classroom, or known as GC, is a website that allows teachers to create a platform for online classroom while dealing with all the documents and media that the pupils need in their learning process. It comes with smartphone application too that enables users to have a flexible teaching and learning style as it can be accessed whenever or wherever they want to. What is a sure model? A sure model is an instructional design guide that integrates both multimedia and technology to enhance the learning environment in the classroom. This model teaches educators on how to insert media into instruction using a few steps that enable them to achieve the desired learning outcomes. There are six processes in a sure model which are analyze learner, state objectives, select methods, media and materials, utilize media and materials, require learner participation, and evaluate and revise. Now, we are going to present to you about our plan to teach adjectives on Google Classroom based on the Assure model. Analyze Learner is the first element in Assure model. An analyzation process is designed to enable educators in providing learning materials, strategies, and instructions that cater to the pupils need in the learning process. So why actually teachers have to analyze their pupils? First of all, it is to increase the rate of learning effectiveness, to modify learning materials that can assist learners, and the last one is to match their teaching styles with their pupils' preference. There is one main question that we as teachers keep on asking ourselves what we have to analyze before creating a lesson. So there are three main things that we have to analyze about the pupils which are age, gender, and the number. Through analyzing pupils' age, gender, and their numbers in the classroom, teachers can start planning the right materials and teaching method that will fit them. For example, we decided to make a lesson for year 3 pupils with 18 pupils in the classroom and mixed gender. Next, we also have to analyze the pupils' intelligence level and prior knowledge. So in our case, if the pupils are in advanced level and they have high English proficiency, we as the teachers, we should pick a specific level of language with a suitable lesson plan to communicate and to teach them so that they can get an effective lesson. And if they have a lot of previous or prior knowledge about the lesson that we're going to teach, it's going to be easier for them to understand things and it's going to be easier for us as teachers to deliver the new things for them. And the last one is we as teachers, we have to analyze the people's learning preferences and interests. So since we are going to use Google Classroom, a too formal online learning session can be extremely stressful and uninteresting to those pupils, especially for your three pupils, right? So we as the teacher, we can prepare materials with visual and auditory elements to be uploaded in Google Classroom. Like for example, we can upload YouTube videos or online puzzles for them to engage with the lesson more and be more creative and have fun while learning new things. And now I'm going to continue to present on the second stage, which is to state objectives. 
In this stage, the teacher will need to state the objectives of the lesson. Teacher can set objectives using the ABCD formula according to Heinrich, Molenda, Russell, and Smaldino in 1996. The audience. For whom is the objectives intended? Behavior. Describe the task or observable behavior using action words. For example, the learners will be able to describe, distinguish, or state something. Condition. What are the conditions that learners will be expected to perform this task? For example, the phrases like by the end of the lesson or at the end of the session. Degree. What is the standard of the learner's performance, which includes time, quality, accuracy, and etc. The examples are the learners will do something with correct adjectives, the learners will do something without error. This is the example of the learning objectives. By the end of the lesson, pupils should be able to describe pictures using suitable adjectives with minimal errors. By the end of the lesson refers to the condition, pupils refers to the audience, describe refers to the behavior, describe is an action verb, while with minimal errors refers to the degree. The third phrase in the Ashura model is Select Method, Media and Materials. Teacher chooses an appropriate online teaching platform and selecting, modifying and designing the specific materials within that format. For example, we decided to choose Google Classroom as our online teaching platform. Therefore, we're going to choose, modify and create the teaching materials that suit with the learning objectives and the pupils' capabilities. Next, teacher decides on the effective teaching method such as teacher-centered or student-centered. For instance, we choose student-centered to be implemented in, the, in our lesson. Kim and Downey mentioned that student-centered activities require pupils working collaboratively with the guidance from the teacher. Therefore, we as an English teacher for the Year 3 Slytherin can ask the pupils to record a storytelling video or do a role play in groups and upload it in the Google Classroom. These methods are really helpful for the kinesthetic learners. Then, the teacher determines the suitable teaching strategy for the lesson through Google Classroom. For instance, teacher incorporating technology in the lesson to make the learning become more interactive. It is because technology, technology allows pupils to be physically engaged during the lesson. Lastly, teacher selects suitable teaching materials for the lesson like the teacher uploaded like the teacher upload a recorded video or an online video in the Google Classroom for the pupils to watch it anytime and anywhere. The video also will help the visual learner to learn better during the lesson. The teacher also can upload a worksheet activity and a picture in the Google Classroom. Last but not least, the teacher the teacher has to ensure the selection of teaching materials must align with the learning objectives and the pupils' learning style. This is the Google Classroom platform that we created for the English subject for Year 3 Slytherine. The Google Classroom provides a class code for the pupils to join in this class and a meet link for the teacher if he or she wants to conduct the class using Google Meet. The fourth stage is to utilize media and material. Utilization is a systematic approach to the process and use of resources to help in the learning process, as stated by Seals and Ritchie in 1994, as cited in Clark 2007. So how can a teacher utilize the media and materials? As stated by Abdul Jashir, Noriati, Boon, Sharifah, and Wan Kamaruddin in 2019, 
The teacher should apply these steps to ensure successful utilization of media and materials. These steps include Preview the materials Prepare the materials Prepare the environment Prepare the learners and provide learning experience. The teacher should preview the materials. The instructions for the materials should be clear for the pupils so there is no confusion caused among them. The suitability for the learners. In this case, we use the year 3 pupils. So the content and the materials should also fit the proficiency level of the year 3 pupils English language. The relatability with learning objectives. The media or the materials used must fit with the learning objectives so that the pupils can achieve it successfully. Teachers should also prepare the materials by gathering all the materials needed first and then decide on the sequence of using them. For example, there are materials being selected in this lesson, which includes the crossword puzzle, the worksheets, and the video of a fable. So the teacher should decide on the sequence of using them. Let's say the teacher wants to use the video as set induction and the rest of the materials should also follow the sequence. Teacher can use the lesson plan as a guide. Then the teacher should also prepare the environment by setting up the Google Classroom because we are using Google Classroom in the internet as the media. Teachers should also prepare the learners by informing them about the learning objectives in every lesson so that pupils can get a clearer idea of what they are going to learn and what they are going to achieve. The teacher should also provide learning experience to the learners by using engaging learning materials or activities to engage the learners. I will show you a video on the preparation of the Google Classroom. Firstly, the teacher should Go to the website of Google Classroom, then click on the plus sign and create class. Then the teacher should insert all the necessary information, which like class name, section, subject and room. Then click create. Then teacher can generate a Google Meet link to provide face-to-face -face interaction platform between the teachers and the students. And teachers should also invite the students by inserting their emails and invite. These are some of the teaching and learning materials being uploaded in the Google Classroom platform. The teaching and learning materials being used are the Fable, Bee and the Dove. This is the YouTube video being produced by the teachers. The worksheet activity, which requires the pupils to read and fill in the blanks with suitable adjectives in the adjective box to complete the sentence. The next materials is the crossword puzzle, which requires the pupils to fill in the blanks using suitable adjectives. So, in this stage, we can see that the teacher utilizes internet to create a platform in Google Classroom, which provides the pupils a place to learn. The teacher can also upload different materials to the Google Classroom so that pupils can access to the materials anytime and anywhere. This will benefit the pupils to learn according to their own pace. The second last phase in the Azure model is require learners' participation. This phase requires the teacher to make plans on how the pupils can be fully involved in the material he or she is teaching. Learners' participation is stressing more on the speaking part that can be acquired in the physical classroom. Meanwhile, for online distance learning, learners' participation is stressing more on the pupils' activeness in engaging with any given task. A good lesson should not be carried out in a one-way communication style, so teachers should think of Will my materials able to attract my pupils' attention? Will my teaching style suit every individual in the class? How the learners can gain new techniques? Therefore, instead of implementing teacher-centered in the lesson, the teacher should develop student-centered in the teaching and learning process. 
So, how to require learners' participation in Google Classroom? Firstly, the teacher set the due date to ensure that pupils will engage with the task given whether individually or in group work. For example, if the teacher said, uh, if the teacher upload a task on Monday, the teacher can set the due date for the pupils to submit the task on Friday so that the pupils will get enough time for them to complete and submit the task on time. As we know, there are some pupils only have one device at home that need that they have to share it with other siblings. So to avoid that situation, the teacher should provide sufficient time for the pupils to complete the task. Lastly, the teacher can use different forms of learning materials so that pupils will not get bored easily of using the same traditional written materials. Hence, the teacher can attach online links for quizzes, videos, or online slideshow. Now, we finally come to the last process in the show model, which is evaluate and revise. Evaluation and revision step needs teachers to consider the parts that did not go well during the lesson. So the reason why the teacher has to go through this step is because all the information that have to be improved can help teachers in redesigning the lesson for future purpose so that the lesson will be more beneficial and be more effective for the pupils. So how can we evaluate those pupils? First of all, we can evaluate the pupils performance through grading the pupils answers on any given task and questions that we uploaded in Google Classroom. And we can also identify whether the pupils have any interest in engaging with the lesson or not through their responses in the comment section in the stream section in Google Classroom or by submitting their work on time. Other than that, we as teachers, we can also evaluate the media effectiveness. There are a few questions that we can ask ourselves whether the media is effective enough to the pupils or not. For example, we can ask, can the pupils easily access to Google Classroom? Was the video chosen can be understood by the pupils? Or was the online task given can be done by the pupils independently? So based on all these questions that we ask, we can evaluate whether our media that we give to those pupils are effective enough to help them to learn new things or not. Lastly, evaluation and revision have to be made on teacher's performance. We can ask a few things to ourselves to evaluate ourselves whether we performed well in the lesson or not. For example, we can ask ourselves, did the lesson meaningful and interesting? Did we manage to communicate effectively? Did the technology that we used to teach can be easily assessed by our pupils or other teachers? Did we show our understanding of the needs and potential of our pupils? So if we ask ourselves all these questions, maybe we can make a few improvements for us in communicating and teaching the pupils in the classroom so that the learning session will be more beneficial to the pupils. As an example of the evaluation instrument, teacher can use the questionnaire. By setting questionnaires to be filled in by the pupils, teacher can get their feedback regarding a few matters that have been mentioned previously. From the feedback of the questionnaire, the teacher can evaluate the effectiveness of the lesson which being planned and conducted using the Assure model. This is the example of the questionnaire about the usage of Google Classroom for online learning. This is the link of the Google Form. So in conclusion, a show model really comes in handy when we as the teachers want to create a lesson and plan for primary pupils. We manage to stay on the right track of designing a lesson about adjectives with proper flow and elements after referring to a sure model. This is because the Azure model provides the teachers a comprehensive and step-by-step -step guide for the teacher to plan and conduct the classroom. Evaluation can be made to improve the lesson for future reference. Not to mention the effectiveness of using Google Classroom 
as an effective online learning platform for students and teachers. This is because it has all sorts of features to be used by teachers and pupils in carrying out the lesson. Some of the examples of the features that we used in our planning of lesson using the Ursho model includes Google Meet and Google Form. In fact, with the application of the Ursho model while using Google Classroom to plan our lesson, teacher can provide interesting and engaging lesson for the pupils. I think that's all from our group for this time around. Thanks for watching our video till the end. Stay at home, stay safe, be healthy, be happy wherever you are, and have a nice day. Thank you.